Good morning, Ken Hendrickson, W6BZY, here with a short video on installing WSJTX on the Mac and getting it set up and working. As you can see, I have it set up and run, running on my Mac computer. Uh, doing pretty good today, this morning. I'm on uh, 20 meters and I keep getting these European countries. I need to get this recorded quickly so I can go look for Scotland, it looks like. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go get WSJTX. Let me get Firefox up here. We're going to type in WSJTX download. And we're going to go to the SourceForge page where the files are all located. Now when you open this this is being recorded in January 2021, and they are still working on a new update for WSJTX. So it's still in the trial error, uh, trial time. They're on revision number three, so they've obviously been fixing bugs in this. And when they get done with and come out with uh, version uh, 2.3, uh, stable release. I'll be taking a look at that, probably upgrading to it. Uh, but for now we're going to download WSJTX 2.2.2 which is the most recent stable uh, release. When we click on this we're going to be presented with a window that shows all of the versions of 2.2.2 and we want the Darwin.dmg file listed right here. So I'll click on that. And we're going to open it with Disk Image Mounter. So we're going to click OK on that. And then we get presented with this uh, agreeing that if it screws our computer up, uh, we're going to be uh, not holding anybody liable. So we're going to agree to that. It's actually a public domain license. This is a uh, free and open, so open source software. At this page, it's very important if you do not have, if you have a regular Macintosh, not the new M1 Mac. If you have the new M1 Mac, you need to watch my video on how to fix the image or the memory error that occurs. So we're going to drag these two files onto our desktop. And we're going to open up the text file, which is a README file. And I'm going to make that a little bit larger so we can read it more easily. And I'll make this a little bigger so we can see the whole line. Um, it says that uh, essentially that uh, this file is going to fix a memory issue that the Macintosh has. Uh, and essentially, it, it's this is a permanent fix to the memory allocation on the all of the Intel Macs. And what you want to do is you want to copy this line and you want to paste it in a terminal, and then uh, press return and type in your password uh, in order to make this fix. Uh, on your computer. So we're going to go down here and we're going to uh, look for, I'm going to back up here, we're going to look for the other folder where the terminal is located. We're going to open up the terminal. We're going to go back over here and we're going to, okay Ken, uh, get that highlighted and right click and copy it. And then we're going to go over here and paste it into our window. We're going to press enter. I'm going to stop at this point. What you need to do is type in your password if you have anything other than an M1 Mac and press enter and the fix will be applied to your computer. Since I don't have an Intel Mac, I'm going to close this window and I'm going to cancel everything. Whoops, I was supposed to hit terminate. <laughs> And I'm going to close this window, and I'm going to get rid of these things. 
But in your case, when you were done, you need to leave this folder on your desktop when you execute that command because this is what fixes it. This is the, what the uh, line is referring to. And it's just adjusting the available memory for the uh, computer. So I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff. You will have gone ahead and in <coughs> finished installing the program. So let me get out of this. Once the program is launched, you'll get a message window here, uh, and then the program will come up. And you're going to want to go up here to WSJTX and choose Preferences. And uh, now that we have it installed, what we're going to do is we're going to go through General Settings, uh, Radio Settings, Audio Settings, Reporting, and Colors and get everything set up. When we're in the radio section, I'm going to give you some troubleshooting uh, tips on how to make sure that your radio works uh, with WSJTX. But we're going to start first at the General tab. Down below in the show notes, I'll have all of these uh, six sections outlined for you uh, so that after you watch the video all of the way through, uh, and if you have issues later, you can come back to these sections by just clicking on the show notes. You won't have to uh, look through the whole video trying to find the part that you need. On the General tab, you're going to put in your call sign. Mine is W6BZY. Your grid locator. And mine is DM14SC. I want to look at all the regions, so I just left this alone. I'm not focusing on any part of the uh, of the world. And I want the full call to be in the TX3. And that's, uh, that's the default, and so is this. Uh, I want to start each new uh, decode period at the top of the screen. And I want a blank line between B decoding periods. And I want the distance in miles. If you happen to be in the rest of the world, other than one of our uh, the United States or England or somewhere that uses miles, you're going to want to uncheck this or not check it. Uh, I want the TX message to the RX frequency window. I want to show the DXCC grid and work before status. Uh, but I don't really need the prefix instead of the country name. I like having a country name. Uh, when I double click on an entry, I want it to launch the TX, start transmitting to that signal. And that's all I'm going to do on the, uh, this window. You can read through the other choices. But the only other choice you might consider changing is how long you're going to transmit, uh, say, making a call or something, before the uh, computer, uh, the program stops your radio from transmitting. This is a safety thing here. So if you start transmitting and something interrupts you, it's going to stop after six minutes. Now, probably the most challenging part is getting your radio hooked up to WSJTX. First thing you're going to want to do is go to this and pick your radio. Mine is an ICOM 7300. Uh, you can see I have that checked. I also have an ICOM 7200, and both of those have sound cards, so they hook up very. Uh, they hook up to WSJTX uh, pretty much the same way. Uh, the only issues I have then is getting the radio set up correctly, and they are different in that regard. But they both have built-in sound cards, so they both pretty much hook up the same way. Uh, the second thing you have to do is uh, find the serial port. On Windows, we would call it a COM port that your radio is going to uh, be controlled by WSJTX. In my case, you can see that it starts up with slash dev slash TTY. And if you think of TTY like teletype, uh, that pretty much tells you that you're looking at a serial port. And it does say USB serial. And then it has an identifier uh, after it. So what we need to do is know if you, in most applications, I think you'll have two cables hooked up. One will be your audio cable for the program uh, to hear uh, the audio, uh, the signals coming in up at the top. 
and uh, transmit out of. The other will be the, the radio control. Now I know that there are videos that show a single cable from the ICOM 7300 doing both things. I have two cables. Uh, I have a, why not use them both? It makes things simpler, uh, less complex. So first thing is, how do you figure out? When you click on this down arrow the first time, you're going to see a whole bunch of uh, information like this probably. And they're all in slash dev slash TTY. And which one is the one that I need? Well, first of all, you can see some of them are going to be Bluetooth. I have Bluetooth devices hooked up here. Uh, and some are going to be just USB serial. And those are the ones you want to look at. In my case, I have two that say USB serial. Uh, and actually two. I have four. Two for the AH06 da da da. And one for the, and two for the 21 13, 10 uh, serial connector. But if you'll notice, if you look, one of, uh, one of each of those pairs says slash dev slash CU. You don't want CU. So in my case, all I have to really do is decide which of these two ports is going to work. So if I were to come in here and I started off making sure I didn't pick the one that said CU, but I picked this one, uh, and I happen to then set everything up. I know that my radio, the data bits are coming 8 and 2, and that I don't have any handshake. And so these DTR and RTS don't really have anything to do with anything. I also know that my radio uh, is going to want to see a cat control, uh, which means that the, I don't have any transmit audio source to worry about. Uh, and that data packet and fake it work. Now, in some cases, rig control. In my radio, I can sometimes use rig control. Uh, split operation with rig, I mean, not rig control. Split operation using rig. But I found that overall, fake it seems to be more reliable. So that's what I have chosen here. When I go down here and hit test, it's going to take a minute, and then it's going to... Okay, it's not going to do it now that I said that, but essentially it doesn't work because push to talk doesn't write up. Uh, sometimes you'll hit this and it'll turn red and you'll get a big error message. I'm not sure why I'm not getting that, but don't be shocked if that happens. So that means that I'm going to try the other one. Uh, by the way, I have the data rate, the baud rate set at 19.2. took a while, but there it is. Uh, it didn't work. Okay. Uh, back to my baud rate. Uh, there are quite a few choices here, and this is a radio specific thing. My CIV cable from my radio uh, is set at 19.2, so that's what I've picked here. Uh, if I had actually used my serial cable, I could have chosen a different value, but my radio, I have it set up so that my CIV cable is 19.2, and I have it matched here. Now when I go down and hit test, it turns green. When I push to talk, it turns red. So it's all working. So a couple of tips. Uh, work on getting the correct cable identified. And if you're having a lot of trouble, in some instance I've actually unplugged the cable uh, to see which one is which, and which one of these disappeared I, uh, to identify the cable. So you might think about doing that. Another thing is that in your radio, you need to know if you need any special USB uh, software drivers for your uh, operating system. In my case, as I said, I have an ICOM 7300, and it requires uh, special drivers. So you might want to do a search to see if your radio requires uh, special drivers for uh, running uh, a radio. Mine, uh, it does, and uh, so I went out and downloaded it. You can actually, if you have an ICOM 7300 or a 7610, there are drivers on the ICOM website. You can just search for USB ICOM da -da -da -da, uh, drivers. 
And the same would probably be true for most other radios. So make sure that you have the correct drivers for your radio. Make sure in the beginning that if you don't have uh, a Mac M1 that you follow the procedures for the memory allocation setup so that you have that fixed. If you have an M1 Mac, look at my video and you'll learn all about what you need to do to make that work. So that is the radio. Now we're going on to audio. In my case, and I hope this is true of most, first of all, I don't know of any radio using uh, such as uh, any device that's going to provide audio in and out of your radio that isn't USB audio codec. So when I click here to choose, I know I'm going to pick a USB audio codec for both send and receive. As you can see, I have other choices, but I want the USB audio codec. So if you have a signal length USB or a rig blaster, those all uh, require USB audio codec when you come to that part. You can change the location of your directory where you save uh, your files uh, and so forth. I haven't changed any of that. Those are all the defaults. Uh, these are mono. These are not stereo connections. Uh, in TX macros, you can add other macros. I haven't done anything there. Uh, I use another program that, that's, uh, that can provide other uh, macros. For reporting, this is really important if, because it, one of the beauties of WSJTX is you can directly take your uh, contacts as you make them and move them into a logging program. And so you're going to want to have it uh, set up down here to enable PSK reporter spotting. It's more that we want to uh, accept UDP requests we're going to use this server here to send our contacts to a logging program. So we, we want it set up like this. In my case, I don't want to forget to log a contact. So I want a window to pop up and tell me to log, up, log it in. I would never, <laughs> even in a contest, log automatically. Maybe if I was in a big hurry. The problem there is that uh, it'll log as soon as you get uh, as soon as you send uh, RR73, if you're working that way, it's going to log it. And you may not get a 73 back, in which case you haven't made a contact. I don't do anything under frequencies. I leave all the settings the way they are. Under colors, I make a little modification here for my benefit. I don't need to see every message that says CQ because a lot of those messages I may have already made a contact with. I want uh, yellow to show that I, when I've transmitted. Uh, I'm interested in new grids. I'm, uh, I mentioned in my other video that I'm uh, going to try to get all of the grid squares in the lower 48. Uh, and I'm also doing them in Canada and other countries. I don't know. I just want to know if it's a new grid. Uh, or a new DXCC on the band, because it'd be kind of cool to have a lot of different countries on different bands. You might not want that, but I certainly want to know when a new DXCC pops up. And the same for all of these other CQ zones and things like that. So I've pretty much left the colors the same. You can actually change the colors. Uh, so you might want to play around with this and change, you know, see what you can do. Uh, so those are the changes that I've made. And here you can see uh, I'm up, we're up and running here and getting countries that I haven't worked before. Here's the Netherlands. I may have to get off here and work that. So in the future, I'm going to be hooking WSJTX up to a logging program. So you might want to watch for more videos. If you uh, like this video, please think about subscribing and hit that thumbs up and I look forward to your watching videos from my channel in the future. This is Ken W6BZY saying 73's and happy hunting.